Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Lowe. I'm a practicing dentist in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today I'd like to uh, welcome you to my office and we're going to discuss uh, uh, a procedure which I think will be very beneficial to helping you in your practice and grow your practice. I've been a practicing dentist for over 30 years. Uh, I'm originally from Chicago and graduated from Loyola University School of Dentistry in 1982. Whether you've been practicing for a uh, a very short period of time if you're a new graduate or or if you've been practicing as I have for many years uh, the challenge always has been as climates change is to maintain growth and health in your existing practice if you listen to Gordon Christensen Dr. Christensen will say that, uh, that the main areas in growth the main growth areas in general practices over the next several years will be in in endodontics and ortho in implants and these are areas that are going to require uh, time, expense, additional training, and, and again, keep in mind with these specialty areas that uh, you know, we will be judged at the level of the specialist as far as the quality of the procedure we're doing. So let's take a look at implants for a second. I mean, if you want to learn to place implants, you may need to take several courses. There are uh, many residencies and things like that, and they, these are not inexpensive. And then to be able to invest in the armamentarium the, uh, that's required for placement, to, uh, to stock uh, implants and grafting material and, and other, mater uh, other things that are needed to do the procedure. There's a lot of initial upfront expense just to be able to place that first implant. For endo, if you want to learn to do rotary endo, see I went to school where rotary endo was not done. We didn't have nickel titanium instruments that could bend around a corner. Uh, all of our root canals were taught to be done with hand instrumentation. So there are you know, endo courses that can be taken to, to learn to do rotary endo, again in single canals if you don't feel comfortable with treating molars. Uh, but there will be again an initial investment in time and you know, you probably want to do a, a few on plastic blocks and, and, and get proficient at the system before you go to the first patient. And, and then again, it's inventory. It's inventory of whatever you need to do root canals. When you look at ortho, you look at Invisalign. Invisalign is big with GPs now. It still takes a commitment for time and training and additional uh, costs for armamentarium to start up. So while offering, I think, these adjunct procedures are good, you have to understand that there is a cost attached to that. When we look at restorative, and we look at how we can expand what we offer in restorative dentistry, all of a sudden uh, the cost factor and the training factor really isn't so much of a uh, thing to consider. One area I've found in my practice that really is helping grow the practice internally, which I think still is the best way to grow, pra grow the practice, is through the use of, of comfort cavity preparation and minimally invasive technologies, early diagnosis, minimal preparation, and use of bioactive materials to help heal and maintain dentition for the lifetime of the patient. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about case selection for comfort cavity preparation. Just like any procedure, comfort cavity preparation requires that you choose the proper patient. So let's talk about this for a moment. Because remember, our, our goal is going to be able to provide an anesthesia-free procedure. If you have a patient that uh, you see for a hygiene check and the hygienist takes a little bit of air to dry off the teeth and maybe there's a little bit of root exposure and some dentin hypersensitivity and you can just see the patients gripping the chair a little bit tighter and, and getting ready to jump when that blast of air is going to hit the teeth, this may not be a good patient, a good candidate for an anesthesia-free procedure. So we want to take a look at the parameters. Another parameter would be patient's age. We know as patients get older, or as I tell them, as their teeth get older, the pulp chambers recede and shrink, and the teeth become less sensitive. So a lot of times we can prepare teeth without anesthesia on older patients, and there's no problem anyways.
Now let's talk about use of SmartBird 2 in, in excavation of Denton, because this, this is something important to understand. The SmartBird 2, this little green round burr, and there's different sizes that correspond to uh, conventional sizes of round burrs. This is a polymer burr. This is made of a specific hardness so that the flutes will not cut healthy dentin. Now in dental school, we're taught to remove every speck of decay. In fact, I think in a lot of schools and a lot of state boards, that's still the case. People ask me all the time, well, what about this stain? Or do you use caries detection dye? And, and on and on and on. We're taught to use carbide steel to excavate carious lesions in dentin. And, and car carbide, uh, carbide steel does not differentiate between infected dentin, affected dentin, and healthy dentin. So let's take the scenario where we've got a, a deep carious lesion and we're encroaching on the pulp space and we're excavating and we're using a steel burr and we're uh, using our caries detection. And you know, in school they were taught if, it, if it's leathery and you can scrape it with the spoon, it's got to come out. And, and if it's uh, sticking with the explorer, it's got to come out. It's just not differentiated, not backed up in the literature. Now with SmartBurr, you talked about ergonomics and time saving. With SmartBurr, I put the handpiece on 68,000 RPM on my electric, which is the optimal RPMs. You don't want to run it too fast. And you can literally just go in and clean out the prep. You go in there until the SmartBurr doesn't cut anymore, and you're done. No more carries indication. Don't stick it with the Explorer. It's going to remove the infected dentin. And now you use your bioactive liners and restorative materials to help rebuild any affected dentin that remains. Place your restorative material and you tell the patient, we're going to see how the tooth responds to therapy. When I'm doing any excavation, you know, based on clinical information and an x-ray, I'll do my minimal um, access form with a fissurotomy burr, just so I can gain access with the smallest, with the smallest smart burr and start excavating any type of lesion that extends into dentin. If I need to open up the prep a little bit more to gain further access because I'm chasing the decay, buckly or lingual or whatever, I do that. But my goal is to maintain as much of the healthy tooth structure as possible and then get the smart burrs in, remove the infected dentin, and then use bioactive liners and restorative materials to effectively seal the tooth. So that in a nutshell describes the procedure. So after we've completed a successful comfort cavity preparation procedure on our patient, I always feel it's important to have an exit interview. So Patrick, all finished, you did great. Uh, tell me, uh, so how was that being done without getting anesthesia? Was that a problem or was that okay? No, it was a very comfortable experience. Yeah. Um, no pain, you know, very minimal sensitivity. I mean, I would definitely go this route again if I had the chance to. Tell all your friends and neighbors because not everybody really does these things. So uh, we're trying to raise a little bit of awareness and, and uh, show patients that, you know what, it's all, it's all about minimally invasive early detection and comfort preparation and then going to the dentist shouldn't be so bad. Well, definitely, uh, definitely tell you know, friends and family that this, this is available and that you, know, you can have the cavity prep and then just get on with your day yeah. without any anesthesia and it's pain free. So. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thank we'll you, see you again for your recall. Thank you. Dr. All right. Take care. So let's, uh, let's summarize uh, the information that we've shared with you today. But what we've discussed is different ways to add on value to your existing practice, whether it be through continuing education, pro providing other services and other techniques and, uh, such as implants and endo and, and ortho, and, and reminding you that there's something you're doing already that you, you can implement tomorrow, and that's restorative. There's cavity preparation, comfort cavity preparation, different approaches to what you're already doing that take minimal time and investment to implement and can help you grow and increase not only your patient satisfaction, uh, but your, your practice volume as well. I look forward to hearing your experiences and how you do in your office 
offering comfort cavity preparation and fissurotomy and, and uh, um, conservative, minimally invasive dental techniques to your existing patient base. I appreciate your time and look forward to hearing about all those positive experiences that you will now have in your own practice. Thank you very much.